Mac tutorial 20, part six. Um, we want to go ahead and enable SSH. So we have our three files here at the moment. I've just done a clear screen. We are in allow ping mode at the moment. And we can assure ourselves of that by doing this. <coughs> I've added, um, oh look, um, because I'm the way I am, um, I'm going to VI that again, go down the bottom. I did just add this line very quickly. Interface. Right, public and private interfaces outbound ping enabled. Let's do that again. Lovely. So we're getting our nice listing of the steps that we're going through. So what we want to do is copy allow to allow minus SSH dash ping dot show. So now we're going to add the rules to allow SSH. So we'll go down the uh, bottom of the file. And what I will do as well is I'm just going to add an echo quote quote and an echo. I want to section these off. So we're going to do that. Um, I'm going to yank yank that. And I'm going to pop another one of those up above uh, the public interface. So it'll be up above that. So it'll be below this. So I'm going to put it in there. I'm going to echo quotey quotey here. I just want to section everything off so that we're getting a nice listing of all of the steps that we're going through. And then finally, at the very top of the file, we want to put one of those and then echo those. Let's see how that looks. Um, lovely. So we've got total lockdown achieved. I want to put a, an echo above there and an echo above there. I just want to have them nicely sectioned out so that we know what we're doing. So that'll be before step three. And then, oh, I'll just do an undo there. Excellent. So there we have it. There's Total lockdown, oh, it's above step two. Just want these in a way that we can read them easier. Yeah, there we go. Step one, step two, steps three, four, and five are about ping, and now we're on to step six. So let's VI this, go down the bottom, and we're ready to add our inputs here about what we're going to be doing. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to allow SSH, I think I said at the end of the last one, we're going to allow SSH inbound to the public interface from only one, um, from only one IP address. So I'm going to just grab this, copy that and paste it in. Just like we did for ping, we're going to allow only one machine, in this case uh, client one, to SSH in on the public interface. So, public interface, and we are going to do IP table. So, how do we how do we achieve this? Well, we already have our allowed host up above there, and um, we can just see it at the top of the screen here. We've said what's allowed. So we're going to do an IP tables and we want to allow SSH for one machine. So we're going to append an input because it's an inbound SSH request. And that's going to be on the interface ETH0. And the protocol is TCP. And the port, the destination port on our machine is port 22. 
and the source is going to be that allowed machine. And again, our rule is going to be accept. Then we have IP tables minus A output minus P TCP. So this is our output to go with the input. Minus minus this time the source port is going to be 22 and the destination is dollar allowed and then we're gonna whoops AA accept excellent so let's do that let's run that and let's grab our uh, client one SSH IPT SRV that's on the public address um, we better say who we're SSHing over as root at uh, in fact root by automatically by default on CentOS and on many Linux distributions you can't log in as root on an SSH there we go yes and we're in cd slash oh, uh, sudo su minus huh. type itis again uh, cd slash root ls and there's our scripts directory so we're in excellent so we can ssh in but can we ssh in from our other machine well let's just check and make sure we can't just in case we've done something that we didn't want to enable um, where am I I'm on client 2 uh, I'm on a SSH e killian at IPT SRV we should see it hanging and indeed it is so connections refused we cannot SSH it. So that's good. We have achieved what we wanted to achieve. I'm just drag this machine back again. Make sure I exit out. IPT, yep, yeah, that's fine. That's all exited out. So we want to VI this file again, head to the bottom, and we want to put in our little moniker to tell us what we've done. Echo quote quotes, and we will do an echo step. What step is it? Six. Um, private, uh, sorry, public, public SSH access on for. Um, dollar allowed enabled let's just run that again see how it looks there we go public SSH and it's replaced so we've got step one two three four and five are about ping and step six is about SSH excellent so it's just double check we didn't ruin anything it, I mean hey it shouldn't do um, there it is it's still accepting the connection of course it is so that's the public public only accepting on one host um, so what we now want to do is we want to enable um, private and now what do we want to do on the private well we could do what we did before um, which is and when I say before, a range, and we'll enable a range of IP addresses, only a range of IP addresses, to SSH in on the private. So let's do that. Let's grab this. What I want to do first is just add an echo in here so that we get that spacing. 
and then I'm going to paste this in. This time we're doing the private interface. Private interface. And this will be step seven. And I'll say private SSH access for 10.0.2. Oh. I 10.0.2.15.16 and 17 enabled. That's what we want to say. So how do we do that? Well, we've sort of got a, a bit of a uh, a bit of a lead in from having done this range before. So first off, it's on ETH1. That is where it's coming inbound from. It's TCP, of course it is. It's port 22, of course it is. Instead of minus S and a particular host, this time it's match an IP range. And that IP range is 10.0.2.15.16. To 10.0.2.17 and minus j accept. Excellent. On this one, on the output, the source port is 22 again. The minus d has to go because the destination isn't allowed. This time it's a minus m IP range minus minus destination range see up there we had um oh i didn't add it in i minus minus source range wow glad i noticed that so we have a source range and a destination range and of course our destination range is exactly the same 0 2 15 to 10.0.2.17 so there we go, private SSH access enabled. Escape, let's see how this looks. There we go, total lockdown, loopback, pings, public SSH, private SSH. So we should now, from our public machine, be able to SSH the public address. And we are, we're in. Can we SSH to the private address? It looks like it's getting a response. And we're in, perfect. So that's fine from client one. From client two, if I can find the window. Here's client two. Our green one from client two can we SSH to the public no because we've only enabled it for one machine but can we SSH to the private already looks good excellent we're in so one final check then let's bring up our terminal which is still looping on our so this is on my Mac machine. I can't even ping the private, let alone actually SSH in. So I'm hoping, although you can enable it, of course, not to reply to a ping, but reply to an SSH. It doesn't mean it doesn't know the machine's there. SSH, Ekillian, at, it shouldn't allow us in. Nothing at all. So again, the only machines allowed to SSH in are on 15, 16, and 17, our IP address range. Now, I don't need to include 15, but you may SSH yourself. Um, so that's good. That's what we wanted. So SSH is now achieved. That's what we wanted. So we've got a nice listing. Our IP tables is complete up to this point. 
So what have we done? Just to recap again, because I know these are getting a little bit long now. Total lockdown, loopback enabled, ping enabled, outbound and inbound. Public SSH enabled just for that one client. And private SSH. Now in software, when you have your cloud machines in software, this will mean that you are only allowing one machine to SSH in on the public interface. But you will allow your machines to talk to each other on the private. When would this come in useful? Well, it could become very, very useful if you had a chef server, because you will need to allow a range for that chef server to interlock and then be able to bootstrap and talk to the server machines that it is the master for, that it is the recipe holder for. So that's SSH. What are we going to move on to next? FTP. Um, it is generally viewed as an insecure mechanism, but a lot of people still use FTP. So I just wanted to cover it just in case.